Morning. Art Hostage here. I'm going to do another live. This is Saturday evening, Saturday night live. And we thought it was going to be the weekend. But to be honest, it feels like a weekday. We've had, um, you know, a huge amount of news has dropped today that we will try to get into as much as we can. And we have a developing situation now in Israel with regards, allegedly, right, the Iranians have started They've launched a drone attack or in the process of doing so. We also had the news today that the Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard has seized a Israeli ship off of the United Arab Emirates near the Straits of Hormuz, which is the pinch point in the Persian Gulf. It's the narrowest part. And there's all we all know about the stories. We talk about the uh, the stories we talk about the Straits of Hormuz and how geopolitically that's been if the Iranians shut it down, they can shut down the supply of oil coming out of the Gulf. The Saudis over the years have tried to circumnavigate that with pipelines coming out of Saudi Arabia, which means it doesn't have to be transported through the Persian Gulf and through the Straits of Hormuz. But it will be interesting to see. You see, it's happening at the weekend, so the markets can get ready for it. On Monday, when well, um, or tomorrow at midnight, when the Japanese, the Asian markets open, and the oil markets open. So there's been a lot of news that has happened today. That was the first thing, the first shoe that dropped. And we got footage that was released of a helicopter dropping down the Iranian commandos right down the rope and they seized the ship. Where it is now, we don't know. Then, of course, we got the terrible news coming out of Australia that in Sydney, in a shopping mall, someone has gone berserk with a knife and that there were people that have been injured people that may have lost their life I'm not even sure of the numbers now And someone can maybe um, someone can enlighten me. How um, was it that five people have passed away? Others taken to hospital. Right. Let me just go and firm this up. It's Sydney, isn't it? Multiple people killed, six people dead and small child injured is what they're saying. Yes, Bronson, right, we don't know where, yeah, because if you flew a drone from Iran to Israel, it would take a few hours to get there. And along the way, the Jordanians have closed their airspace, so they're going to shoot down anything in their airspace and wherever else. And Hezbollah 
have got a hundred cruise missiles. Um, sorry, thousands of missiles ready to go from the, the north. This right could be might not just one attack as a tip for tat for the um, Damascus embassy killing of the Iranian general and. The, you know, this could be a wave of attacks. And if that's the case, at what stage do Israel regard themselves as physically at war with Iran and then respond? And as I say, back to the Australia thing. So obviously, when the news dropped that six people have been killed, uh, by a, um, an attacker. There's video of this attacker with the great big knife, okay, and then a, a lady police officer came in, right, and um, he went with her, went at her with a knife and she shot him dead, right? So then all of a sudden it's going all around the world with the natural assumption of what this was, this attack. And then all of a sudden, we then have something which Uncle Donald Rumsfeld used to call unknown unknowns. Because it, it then started to emerge, and I don't know if it's been confirmed, it seems it has, that this man that had killed six people in a stabbing spree and all of this carry on and been shot dead by a woman police officer was in fact called Benjamin Cohen and that he was Jewish, and that allegedly, right, that the first victim was his ex-partner or something, and the baby or child that he stabbed was her child or something like that. But, you see, when the media started, uh, assumed that this was going to be an attack from a Muslim or someone from the Middle East or something, they were ready to run with it as an atrocity and everyone was getting on the bandwagon. But the moment that it turned out that it was someone called Benjamin Cohen and he's Jewish, it's now, oh, a terrible, tragic incident of a man having a mental breakdown. And can we please move on to something else very quickly? This would have dominated the news wall to wall right for days. Now, I'm just saying this how I see it. Of course, it's a double standard. Of course it is. I'm not stupid. That doesn't justify bad actions by anyone. So it's just, it's an interesting case study that everyone was ready to start. You know, let's start the engines and everything. Oh, hang on a sec. Oh, what, what, wait a minute. Oh, so who is the man who, oh, his name's Benjamin. Oh, he's just, oh, dear, sure, sure. Okay. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, yes, it's not. Um, It was a tragic, sad incident. Quick, move on, move on, quick. Quick, memory hole it, memory hole it. We don't want to talk about that now. It's a double standard and it's blatant. Whether you agree or disagree, right, it's too blatant. And it's come right at the time, right right at the time when there is a war. And the thing, the thing, see, the thing is, right, this is not a war, right, it's, it's an Abrahamic religion war, right, but Christianity ain't involved, it's nothing to do with us, it's the other two, isn't it, it's the other firms, isn't it, the Jews and the Arabs and the Muslims, but like every time, Christianity's getting dragged into it as well, so anyway, right, Let's just have a few headlines, shall we? Let's scroll down and see what other people are saying. Oh, Zoe's here.
do you know what, Zoe? I'm going to get to them comments, right? And to be honest with you, yeah. I'll, but listen, Zoe, you know you've got to be a bit careful, right? You know what I mean? You've got to be a bit careful. But listen, don't think anything gets past me. I'm not stupid, right? When I see wrongdoing, when I see nepotism, when I see overachieving, when I see all of this stuff, right, by certain groups of people, do you think I ignore it? No. I know what's going on. Right, do you think I don't know the history of the last 2,000 years? Of course I don't, right? Of course I know about what's gone on. Certain families that raised up and certain evils and extreme and all that. You think I don't know? Of course I know. But I'm just choosing my words very carefully. I'm just trying to work, work my way through this labyrinth. And yes, I mean, if the three teams that we're looking at is Christianity, Judaism and Islam, Right, well, I'll have to put my nails on the, um, you know, I'll have to, um, uh, um, I'll have to plant myself on with Christianity, right? Because the two others, right, all they do is cause trouble and have done for thousands of years. All of them, all the other ones, they all cause so much trouble, honestly. You can't believe it, honestly. The tr and they come and they infiltrate the institutions of Christianity and the West and all of that. You think, I don't know that. The Federal Reserve, and I, you think I don't know? Of course I know. But what's the point of going on here, start saying all that, right? Then you attract the the attacks and all that carry on, and you end up losing the channel. What's, so what have you achieved? Nothing. You've got to be crafty. But don't. not a lot gets past me. So anyway, here we go, right? Religious war in jail as white gangs fought against Muslim extremists. Now, what has happened? He says, a lot of Muslim extremists in jail, they're not really religious, right? They're trying to get a better way of life and do their sentence, right? They're not religious. They don't believe in none of that stuff, right? It's just um, um, a means to an end. And then they get extreme because they're in jail. And then these little gangs start to um, develop. Well, the white gangs are, are, are now fighting back, right? Led by two scousers. One of them's called Richard Caswell. Right, they're all the Aryan thing. Look, all it's doing is replicating what's going on, what's been going on in America for decades. That within the prison system, you get groups of people, and then what's happened, right, is that the um, uh, the Muslim groups, right, have been dominating, right, and now all the other groups are, are, are playing catch up, segregation, and all of that. But to be honest with you, because humans are tribal, is it a bad thing segregating? Certain groups, I don't think it is a bad thing. I think people should be, you know, and then they can flourish within their communities and our communities. We can come together, you know, and meet up sometimes and that, but people need to have their own cultures and all this. We keep being told to celebrate cultures. Yes, right, yes, let's do it, right? But we don't want to integrate. We don't want to integrate because too many bullies and aggressive people want to dominate. Right, see what happens, integration leads to domination by the strongest party. So the best way to do it is separate, right, and have your own groups. There's no, pro no, no problem with that. So I, I am all for segregation rather than, than integration because that has been a terrible failure like multiculturalism. The Royal Navy in the Middle East have seized... 33 million quid's worth of gear in two busts. And a story back from October 2019. On October the 15th, 2019, Dave Chappelle, the comedian, told Oprah Winfrey that his handlers repeatedly tried to medicate him and convince him he was insane. Well, you see, Dave Chappelle, his parents are professors at Columbia University, so they're with all that woke game and all that stuff and all that mind ultra and all that stuff. Yeah, of course they are. The political left has proven beyond a doubt that they are authoritarians. Of course they are. Look, you start at the clock and you go left, right to the left wing, and you go right, the right wing. When you get down to the half hour, they meet. Both um, fascism and and um, communism, right, are based on the same principles of totalitarianism.
Rico Wade dead at 52. Atlanta rap legend is remembered by fellow hip-hop stars Killer Mike, CeeLo Green and 3-6 Mafia following sudden and unexpected passing. What's he do? Top himself then? Funny, isn't it, that? Sudden and unexpected. So it makes you wonder what's happened there then. Mikhail Martin, Ireland's Minister for Defence and Foreign Affairs, has been pictured today with a Muslim councillor who said protesters should be shot in the head. They're not even trying to hide it anymore, are they? Yeah, news is breaking now from official Israeli defence sources, right? This is literally hot off the wires. From the Israeli defence forces, Iran launched UAVs from within its territory towards Israel a short while ago. Well, it don't matter if they did or if they didn't, right? We're going to see some kind of damage, sadly, but then Israel has got the perfect excuse to attack Iran now because they're saying Iran has launched UAVs from within its territory. Okay, so that gives the perfect excuse for it, for it, it, Israel to then respond. And a quote that I saw in the media today, right? And I and I say this with the greatest of respect, right? But someone said, and I'll quote what they say, Scotland is a country built on being abusive and insulting as a form of affection. This law, hate law, is like criminalising passive aggressive politeness in England. And it's a communication, it's a way, and it's not only in Scotland, you see it in England as well, especially on council estates where people are not that good at articulating. Aggression, okay, right, can be, you know, um, it's done as a, as a kind of passive-aggressive thing. And then earlier I said the diet is cast now, because whatever happens now is all being scripted. You do realise and I even think the Iranians are in on it as well. Honestly, I do. I think they're all in on it. All of them. It's a big club and we ain't in it. I think that they've all got their heads together and they now know what is the pathway. And is this the pathway, right, because the Biden administration would get destroyed at the ballot box? Because the Tories in the UK would get destroyed at the ballot box? Because the French economy has gone in the toilet? Because of many other reasons. And so they, are they playing this out in the same kind of way? But I think they're all in it together. Honestly, I really do. The elite, the people in charge, right? I'm not talking about the people on the street. I'm talking about the elite. I think they've all got their heads together and said, this is what we're going to do. And this is how it's going to play out and everything. So this is all, in my opinion, it's all choreographed. There's always the unknown unknowns, as Uncle Donald Rumsfeld said. And there's always the, um, an accident or someone goes too far or does this, that and the other. Of course there is. But the main thrust of this is all being choreographed. 
Like one unknown unknown today was Benjamin Cohen going potty down in Australia. Because because the pendulum swung one way. Oh look 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 what's happened. And then it's and then when it found out who it was, swung the other way. Quick memory, old. He says, "Get that. That's not good. That, that that's not good propaganda." So anyway, right, let's say hello to everyone. Morning, Zoe Gilday. You never walk alone. John Hayworth. Bronson's in this evening. Could be an important one this evening, Bronson. Shay's in, the serial thriller's in. Pat Butcher's in. Frankie's in. Hello, Frankie and Paula. Hope you're doing well. You're, you're enjoying your retirement. Rare Cockney Governor's in. Planet Max is in. Right, so let's see what we've been we've got that's going on then. Bronson says drones on their way to Israel direct from Iran. See, that's what they want us to believe, right? It, whether it's true or not, that is what we're running with. So any damage by what just one drone means it's an attack on um, Israel directly from Iran. So then the next question is how do the Israelis react or respond? Will we see a massive air, air bombardment of Iran's nuclear facilities and all that stuff, including the United States and, and the UK? I don't know. Then will we see the Straits of Hormuz right um, closed completely next week? Sends oil to $200. Because you have to remember the Iranians have got missiles right stationed all along the Iranian coast. They can sink anything they want in the Gulf, including U.S. aircraft carriers. I don't think there is any U.S. aircraft carriers in the Gulf at the moment. I might be wrong. You can go on that tracker thing. But if there is, that is a sitting duck. But all Iran would have to do, right, would be just to sink a couple of oil tankers in the Gulf by the Straits of Hormuz, right, means all the countries would be frightened to move the oil. The oil it, it $200. Send the world into a financial tailspin, but crucially, they can blame it on this situation when the underlying world economy is built on sand and debt. And Zoe says, if there was no Islam, no Judaism and only Christianity, the vast majority of evil in this world would dissipate in a heartbeat. Well, to be honest with you, there is a case to be made for that. There is a case to be made for that, you know, and there will be those who disagree with that. It is to do with us because Islam and Judaism are both destroying our way of life, says Zoe. And to be honest with you, again, you can make a case for that. You can go back and look from the Second World War at the Jewish influence in Western society and whether that's been a good thing or a bad thing. You can then go and see the emergence of Islam spreading across the West and with all the Middle East unrest and everything, and you can make a case that that's a bad thing as well. I'm sure people will make a case the other way, but... You can go and look at the evidence. You can look at over-representation by, uh, by Jewish people within high positions of power. In the US, they're 2% of the nation, yet they hold the actual figure I wouldn't know, but let's take a guess, 70, 75% of all the top positions. They're 0.5% in the UK, right, yet hold... Right, again, 70% of all the top positions. When you see a panel on the BBC or places like that, four, four people on there, two are Jewish, you go, well, look, what's going on here then? Oh, you can't say that. Well, I am saying it. 
So there's plenty of blame to go round. And as I said to you before, right, there are many people out there for years have had their voices suppressed when speaking right um, about Jewish people. That now they feel that it's that, that, that it's time to stand up against Zionism and all of those things. Right, and so that's why they're supporting the Palestinians or taking their side, not because they believe in anything about that. They're using that as a vehicle. And you see, you've got to remember, but for decades, right, on the Jewish side of it, there was always the power of the media, and it was it was an echo chamber. But on the other side of the argument, they've learned a bit now, and so they know how to fight that or they know how to compete with that and it's making the other side because in this war without whether you take it or not right israel and the jewish argument right has lose has been losing badly in the propaganda war and so and, and at the end of the day what i always say is look it doesn't matter right what we think or moral ethics whatever at the end of the day if the the israelis right, feel threatened, they will take the whole planet down. Right, they will take the whole planet down without a shadow of a doubt. They will turn it nuclear without a bat of an eyelid. Moisha Dayan, the, the um, Israeli general with the eye patch in the 70s said, and I'll quote, Israel must, must fight like a mad dog. You can go back and find all the quotes, but that's not representative of the whole nation. It's just those people with those kind of ideology are in charge. And you can say the same about Iran and Saudi Arabia. And again, yes, so if anyone comes up with all this multiculturalism, oh, it's been a failure and all that. No, it's not. It was there was a specific intention to cause chaos and destruction. Right. Whilst not saying it's 100 percent true, but go and read the clergy plan. Go and read the clergy plan about importing people into Europe and making a mix and all that and coming up with a new race of people, a new group of people that are homogenised between different things because they'd be more compliant. <clears throat> I mean, go and um, go and listen to the listen to the to what Louis Farrakhan thinks. Go and listen to other similar-minded African Americans. Don't have to agree with them, but that's their point of view. Then go and have a look at some white people, right, who may say the same thing, and then, right, the attitude's different. Go and see some Middle Eastern people and see what they say. Angela Merkel in 2009 admitted in public, it's on the record, multiculturalism has been an unmitigated disaster. It has failed. 2009. 2016, um, Angela Merkel said multiculturalism is the way forward and allowed one million immigrants into Germany in one go.
See, I've always said, right, bad is bad. If someone, right, um, mugs someone on the street, it doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter what group they come from. What they've done is wrong. But you see, we all do it. We self-censor because this is the platform where we try to air it, express our views, but we have to be a bit careful. We've now got another place to burn a channel where we can go and we can have a chat and we can speak a bit more freely and delete it. But we see what's going on. Please don't ever think that people don't know. When you see news presenters on TV, Kay Burley and all those other people, right, through that thing from 2020, right, spewing out the propaganda. Don't think they don't know what is really going on. Right? Don't think they're stupid and idiots and all that. They're not. They're far from that. They've got a job to do. And they get given a bit of paper, right? And if it says it on there, the moon's made of cream cheese, la, 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 that's what they've got to read. When they're asking questions of people coming on, they've got an earpiece in. And if they someone starts to go off the reservation, the producer in the earpiece says, get them off, move on, move on. If they ask an inappropriate question, right, the producer says, yeah, move on from that, don't ask that question. They are being told what to do. But please don't ever think they don't know what's going on. Please don't ever think that when you see Boris Johnson acting like a clown and bumbling and fumbling, right, that Boris Johnson is an idiot. He's not an idiot. That is one of the, that is one of the fallacies that when we say, oh, they're a bunch of idiots, they're not. They're not. They act like idiots because they're useful idiots in that respect. And yes, we do get some who are actually idiots. OK, but please um, underestimating the people and the leaders, right, um, by saying that they're idiots, right, is a cop out. And that's what people want. Oh, the caliber's not as good as it used to be, of course. <clears throat> Of course, that's just that, that's what people want you to think. It's an effective political tool. They are the US. Oh, my God, look, U.S. says Iran has begin, begun an airborne attack against Israel. Right, Israel Channel TV, 12 TV, Iranian drone Salvo is expected to reach Israel at 2 a.m. in the morning. And it's now, right, the U.S., um, see, look, the propaganda thing's being ramped up, right? But listen, it doesn't matter what, what the truth is, right? We are right, preparing ourselves for something we're not certain of the outcome. Iran's attack likely to unfold over a number of hours. That is being released by the US within the last one minute. OK. And now, right, even people like Infowars and Alex Jones, right, is, Iran has declared war on Israel the so-called alternative media, okay? So you see the way that they've shaped this argument. Iran, uh, sorry, Israel overstepped the mark and crossed the red line with regards international diplomacy and immunity, right, by the missile attack on the Iranian embassy in Damascus, killing the generals. That has now provoked a response from Iran that's being spun as if, as if Iran has unilaterally, out of the blue, decided to declare war on Israel.
Michael Stephen, if this conflict turns nuclear, the first word, per, the first side to use it will be Israel. That they might try and get the Americans right to put their hands up for it, but it'll be Israel. I mean, to be honest with you, some hawks in the Israeli war cabinet might say, right, the minute one, it's Israel, right, send an intercontinental ballistic missile from Dimona out of its silo, right, on Tehran. Take it out completely, right? The whole of Tehran's just gone. Who knows? I honestly don't know. You've then got another thing, right, is if any of the bases used to attack Iran are from the Middle East, right, then, then Iran will attack that country. So the UAE, Bahrain, um, Dubai, um, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia and all of that, right, so that's where it's all moving up. So that's why they have to fly them off the aircraft carriers. Right, the um, biggest escalation without m mass casualties will be closing the Straits of Hormuz, okay, or the Iranians attacking the Saudi Arabian oil infrastructure. Blow up a couple of their um, pipelines or something like that, because that would send, right, the global economy in a tailspin like 2008 because 2008 it was all a light underneath in the economy right all, with all that cheap mortgage-backed securities and that that was burning under the surface but oil they chased it up the speculators to june 20 2008 in june 2008 oil hit 149 dollars in June, and then it started coming down by September. It was down to like, um, I don't know, $30, $40, $50, and we had the financial meltdown, and some of it was blamed on the oil price running up and everything, with the oil prices coming up again. Gold has hit three uh, $2,400. But to be honest with you, right, and I don't want to sound vindicated, and I don't want to speak for Zoe to be vindicated, and I don't want to say as if we were scratching around, but the sense of foreboding that we've had over the last few weeks and couple of months, will this prove to be the catalyst? Will this prove to be it? I honestly don't know, but there was a, a genuine sense of foreboding, and we was exploring those at, at the turn of the year. If you go back, see, all the episodes are there. This is episode 1074. Right now, at the turn of the year, we were... Ex Zoe, you can confirm this. Do you remember we were talking about measles and how measles is starting, outbreaks of measles, and what would be the consequence? Well, they'd have to shut all the schools. It could be locked down. And there was this sense of foreboding, but we didn't couldn't put our finger on what it was. Of course, because of the Israeli thing in October... But that was sort of like just sort of chugging along, wasn't it? And we didn't, we thought, okay, flare ups and this, that, and the other, and da 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 da. We then thought, all oh, the American elections are coming, what's going to happen there? And this, that, and, the, and we couldn't really put our finger on it. Then all of a sudden, right, in the last few weeks, couple of months, we've had President Obama. Right, flying into London, right, debriefing the British Prime Minister. See, because they do it in person now. Because of all that recording and that stuff, they, they, they're actually getting back to basics. A bit like the criminal world. You see, the criminal world for decades used to be word of mouth, whisper in the ear roll, right, literally. And then all of a sudden, Encro Chat came along and they all got lazy and their egos were inflated. And so they all got captured and a lot of them are in jail. So now the criminal world are going back to old-fashioned word, you know, whisper in the ear. 
people say from one place, right, that no electronic stuff whatsoever. They get on a bus, they go to the train station, they go off here, they pick up a hire car somewhere, they then go off somewhere, they meet they meet the person who's done the self same thing. There's no electronics with them, no phones, no nothing. And they have the discussion and then they go back. And that is just the way that it's starting to operate. They're going back to basics. And, they, and to be honest with you, right, it starts at the top. Right, now Zoe comes in, thankfully, with a bit of reassurance. I mean, I'll cling to any kind of reassurance at this stage, right? So Zoe says, they want you to think it will be nuclear. We are miles away from that, and the world may well end before it even gets to that. Don't believe the nuclear lie. Its intention is to distract and cause fear. Well, it certainly yes. It's funny people think Israel will be scared of drones they are follow they uh, they are following since launch and know the exact time they will arrive. I know Zoe, listen, shush, shush, Zoe, right? Listen, right? Uh, this is like 9-11. This is like us talking about 9-11 the day before. <laughs> right, literally, the way that the see the way that the speed of everything is so quick that even before things have actually panned out, even before situations or events have happened, we get an opportunity, right, to pick holes in them already. Yeah, hey, oh, look, the drones are on their way to Israel, right? And, and, and Zoe comes out with straight away. Um, it's funny, people think Israel will be scared of drones. They are following them since they launched and know the exact time they will arrive. So that's, Zoe, I said it earlier, I think it's a big club, we're not in it, so, uh, George Carlin said that, and it's true, I think the Iranians, Israelis, Saudis, Americans, British, French, German, I believe everyone's in on it, I think they, I think it is, it's another one of them, one of them global things, they're all in on it. Now, the thing is, right, is they've, all, they've got to make sure they keep it under control because you've only got to get one dodgy thing, you know what I mean? John Hayworth says those drones will never make it. Yeah, do you know what I want to know, though? Zoe, right, John, Michael, all of you, listen, Planet Max. What about if this drone attack and all that is distraction and something else is going to happen? In other words, this is the left hand. Quick, look, all the drones are coming, right? What is the right hand doing? Right, if I was in the intelligence circles, I'd go, yeah, all right, well, we know all about the drones. Listen, what else is going on? Because this is not just a distraction. Is there not something about to happen that all of a sudden, you know, the drones are there and all that stuff, they're coming, right? What That's the left hand. What's the right hand doing? Because it's all sort of, um, it's all, it's to me, it's choreographed. Don't you see the, I don't see the random nature of this. You know, the random nature of events, the random nature of things, you know, um, uh, you know, something happens. China into Taiwan next year, maybe. Mm, I can't really, but I know what you mean. There you go. Like a magician's hand, it moves. The other hand carries the payload. I'm only not raising this question because it's, um, oh dear, it's quite scary. I mean, you know, we do tend to get a little bit out of hand here and conspiracy theories, but I think quite rightly so. And especially on this thing, which has been building up, hasn't it? But the way there's been so much, right, telegraphing it and factoring it in, which I think, 
over the last week or so since the Damascus attack, it seems as if certain things have been accepted. Will this drone attack right create something else and then the Israelis are go in a Rafa or something like that? I don't know. You know, um, are this drone attack coming from Iran going to be the distraction and then we get a massive attack from Lebanon? Will we get some kind of intifadery thing kind of in the West Bank? Because that's been raising up. I honestly don't know where to think, where to start. I hope there isn't an aircraft carrier in the Persian Gulf, is there? Shall we see where the US aircraft carriers are? Because that will be the optic. I mean, that will be a wet dream for the Islamic world to see the United States of America have one of their aircraft carriers sent to the bottom of the Persian Gulf. U.S. aircraft carrier's location, right here we are, round the world. Let's have a look. Five days ago, the uh, Ronald Reagan, but there's nothing up in the Gulf. Let's have a look. Where are we? Where's the Gulf? There's Africa. Bloody hell. Right, let's go in a bit. Let's go right in. Let's have a look. Turkey, Azerbaijan. Here we are. Here we are. Look, there's nothing there. Look, no, nothing there. No, nothing at all. No US, um, what's names at all? Uh, vessel finders. So that just shows you, doesn't it, you see? Do you remember, you see, that, uh, that the US withdrew their aircraft carriers from the Persian Gulf and that they've been, so a lot of them have been going back to San Diego for repairs, so-called, and all this carry on? Because in many ways, right, aircraft carriers now were sitting ducks. Hypersonic missiles, you can't stop them. And then we got, um, then we got to um, figure into the equation that if Iran, if this is going to escalate and then Israel attacks Iran, even with US help and all that stuff, right? How does Russia react? How does China react? Will we see a flare up of of fighting and tensions right in Pakistan on the Pakistan Iranian border? Will we see a um a flashpoint with um Kashmir? with the Indians, getting the Indians involved. Because when you have these things happen where the whole attention is on, other people think it's, you know, do you remember the saying um, on 9-11 when the Labour spin doctor person said, it's a good time to bury bad news? And that's something else we got to, um, we got to look out for as well. That when we got all of this polarisation, Right, they slip out bad news. So we got to keep digging around, seeing things that might be on page three or four, five or six of the newspaper, metaphorically, or online, but not given prominent column inches.
So what we could do, right, obviously because this is an unfolding situation, right, it's um, it's only 10 to 10 in the evening. So what I'll do is when I finish this one, I can come back. If we get to the wee small hours of the morning and it's developing and things are happening, I don't mind coming back. Is there a drone tracker app like Flight Tracker, Gary Toe says? I don't know, Gary. All I know is I know that there was the old things, the trackers for, which is the government thing with um, US aircraft carriers and ships and all that, and even aeroplanes, but I don't know about drones. I mean, to be honest with you, we don't know how this is going to turn out. And let's just hope that it won't, you know, it, it stops before it gets any further. For decades now, Israel was wanted to, right to um, attack Iran and their nuclear facilities, etc., etc. Okay, now, and a lot of hawks in the American administration have wanted to as well. Do you remember him, John McCain? Bomb, 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 Iran. Bomb, 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 Iran. Do you remember that from 20 years ago or something? So now all I can say is that they would never have had a much clearer, better opportunity to implement that policy with what's going on tonight. It doesn't matter, right, the seriousness of any of those drones, right, if they can produce evidence or even fabricate it, that they originated in Iran and then Israel declares war, okay, then, then they can use that to attack Iran. That's right, Michael, yes. Israel media, yeah, I did say it earlier. Israel media, Israeli media has reported the drones could start arriving around 2 a.m. local time. That's midnight hour time. But the missiles could arrive sooner. The U.S. Air Force conducts B-52 bomber exercises with unarmed nuclear cruise missiles. You see, didn't, didn't, do you remember me saying that they've been up in the rhetoric in the last week, 10 days, preparing the public, talking about doomsday scenarios, what would happen and all of this stuff, right? And I said, I think it's strange and sinister the way that they are up in the ante. And the way that words can come back to haunt you, right? In 2020, during the election, Joe Biden said about Donald Trump, as the walls close in on this man, I am worried that he's going to get us into a war with Iran. Those were the words of Joe Biden in 2020, saying that about Trump, as the walls close in on this man, I am worried he's going to get us into a war in Iran. Oh, dear. We're talking boats on the ground now in Ukraine, right? Yeah, is, right, Iran begins attack on Israel. It's up being updated, right? The latest one is that the Jordanians said they're going to shoot down any... Um, Boss names, any drones. And we ain't even had a look at the football yet.
We haven't even got into the football yet. Let's have a look what happened now. It's been a funny old day in the football. We had the early kickoff. Newcastle beat Tottenham 4 0. We then had Burnley at home 1, Brighton and Ove Albion 1. Brighton season is tapering off. We then had Manchester City 5, Luton 1. And the late kickoff was Bournemouth 2, Manchester United 2. In Scotland, it was business as usual. Celtic 3, St Mirren 0. In the Championship, the early game, a surprising Leeds 0, Blackburn 1. But thankfully, Ipswich drew at home with Middlesbrough 1 all. So the Championship, right, has not been decided. You know, Leeds are clinging on. But, but, but two wins or something like that could sort them out. In Spain, we got Barcelona to beat and Cadiz. Which puts them second. 31 games, but Real Madrid are eight points clear. They won away at Mallorca. Mallorca. 1-0. So it looks like um, Real Madrid are going to win the title there. There's seven games to go, and they're eight points clear. So I would say that Real Madrid are going to win the league now. The Masters, that's the golf. Someone called Morikawa. Right, the leader is Sh Scheffler, nine un seven under. But I think tomorrow's the big game in the Masters, isn't it? That's where it's all decided tomorrow. I don't keep up with the golf very much, to be honest. And also this evening later on is the UFC 300 from Las Vegas. 300, right? But to be honest, I've looked at the card and it, and it ain't that good. You know, you'd have thought they'd have had loads of world title fights. I think there's only one or two. So UFC 300 is somewhat of a disappointment. But then again, I'm not a connoisseur, so I might have got it wrong. Well, okay, so we all agree. Now, I'm not a connoisseur of um, or a scholar on UFC by any stretch of the imagination, but um, I haven't. Um, but the uh, term that that Zoe's used there is appropriate: a rubbish card. And for UFC 300, it's not very good, is it? As I say, we've entered a new era with regards to propaganda. The traditional dominance of propaganda by one side, right, the days of that are over. And if we take the Middle East as a snapshot, okay, the point of view from the so-called Arab Muslim Islamic point of view, right, is using their oxygen much more wisely and the Israelis the neoliberal say western point of view 
right, is now being threatened, whereas it was all one-sided. Evening, Darren. All right, the rubbish cards are always the best. Now, you've educated me on that because I really don't know. I look at the names on there and don't know any of them, apart from there was um, Pluflu, I don't know. But obviously, Las Vegas, like it's, um, it, I think it starts early, but it don't finish till about four o'clock in the morning or five in the morning. Mind you, we might have to be up late, late ourselves. Hey, Darren, why don't you go live tonight? You can go live now. Why don't you do a live later on tonight over the UFC? And you can always throw in a little bit about the Middle East stuff that's going on. Because to be honest with you, I'm just in two minds here now. If this is going to get out of hand overnight and we're going to do a long live, do I do it here or do I go over on the Burner channel? You know, because no doubt, look, it's now just gone 10 o'clock. They're meant to land at 12 o'clock, so I might go off in a minute and come back around midnight or something, or as it develops. Police confirm there's 14 people been arrested at the Grand National. And most of them have been charged with crimes against fashion. <laughs> and um, the um, the archive stock um, photograph is released every Grand National, right, Ladies' Day at Aintree, right, um, of the stereotype of the porta potty scouser bird, right, you know what I mean? Right, and it is a photograph of a woman going to the Grand National, right, with um, uh, heels on and um, an electronic tag on her ankle. And everyone laughs and all that. Right, but it is a stereotype. I did see Ladies' Day, and there were some extremely attractive, nice girls. There were some absolute, right, porta potty slappers with all the surgery and the big fat lips and all that game, right? But it's, you know, as Bertie Bassett said, it takes all sorts. Sorry, what's that, Darren? Art, the first video I do is Thermo Pile, the battle for the West, or as Hollywood like to call, the 300. Okay, what's that then? You're going to upload that, are you? Well, no, I'm just saying it, it was, um, it, I mean, it, there's an opportunity you're about now. Why don't you go live, um, you know, and do your first live tonight? You can do it via StreamYard and get people on as guests, or you can do it in this format that I'm doing here. I'm just it was just me floating it out there for you. That's all. Zoe, where do you think I should come live later on? Where do you think I should go live later? Shall I come on here or shall I do it over on the Burner channel? I'm not sure. And needless to say, right, Zuju, right, they're more interesting in who said what and he said this and she said that. And you see all of these global events and everything just go over their head. Okay, all right then, Zoe, I will. 
Um, let's go to Right, for those of you who haven't, right, this is um, the Burner channel, okay? Right, this is the burner channel, right? So go, you, you can go, go and subscribe over there, and I'm and I'll be live later. There. Right, I'll have to go and set up a live over there. Right, and there won't be any moderation over there apart from Zoe, right? But it'll be one minute. Right, it'll be one minute, that's all. So for those of you who haven't, go and subscribe to Well and Fact, okay? And um, we can go live there. Um, Right, so um, let's see what else is breaking. You see, I mean, and, and all I can do is report to you. Normally in these situations over the years, Normally in these situation over the years, okay, um, on places like social media, you would get one one side of the argument. They would it will be flooded, and people have accused um, um, they get flooded um, by say the Israeli perspective, and it drowned out any kind of discussion or disagreement or dissent now it's being evened up i mean if i go on x now and right and you just put in the term iran and you have a look what's coming up right it's certainly not pro-israel that's why there's a lot right of calls for censorship and everything because 
right? Um, Israel, in many ways, are losing the argument. And what has happened, right, is because of the terrible thing that happened in October, but the event since has given, right, people the confidence to express themselves. And they're losing very badly, not only the Israeli argument, but also the Jewish argument around the world. And I'm just observing this from the outside looking in. And also, you know, if you sit if you sit here and look at um, military strategy, oh, hang on, what are you saying? It's not Darren who's coming to and all that. Oh, it's PD using Darren's account. Right, hang on. Sorry, I'm a bit slow, Zoe. Right, so that's not Darren, it's someone else. Right, I'm going to hide them then. So that's gone. Right, that and no smoke without fire, it's not Darren. Who is it, PD? Not another, oh, it's not another one, is it? Oh, for mind you, mind you. Right, Zoe did say that the PD's got over 1,000 accounts. We'd be, we'd be here forever. Well, I should imagine PD are putting an appearance on Well and Feck later. Do you know what? Sorry, I weren't even paying attention to many of the comments, Zoe. I, I just read it and go, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm not interested. We're talking about big issues here. We're talking about the future of the planet, right? And all, have I got time for PD impersonating Darren? Oh, for goodness sake. Mind you, as I say, I should have known. I should have known earlier, right? Because don't forget, do you remember, see, those of you who listen, do you remember, well, in fact, do you remember the Burner Channel when we did the first episode the other night and the fake Zoe Gilday came in? It was middle of the night. The fake Zoe Gilday came in, right? And um, I briefly, for about 10 seconds, gave that Zoe Gilday a spanner. A moderator spanner and, and then and then went, Oh no, what am I doing? Took it away and said, Zoe, is that you? And then Zoe woke up about 3 a.m. in the morning and went, No, it weren't me. Go and check the account. And I'll check the account, and it was the real one. So the real Zoe had that. Sorry, what have I done now? I've cocked it all up, haven't I? Planet Max says, Zoe, Scud Defense is good. And do you know where the name of the missile called a Scud missile came from? Well, it was a Scouser who was in the British Army, right? And when the missiles came over, right, he looked up and he went, hey, Scud in it, Scud in it, and the name stuck, right? So, yeah. Right, and, and one of the Iraqis, right, um, one of the Iraqis first Gulf War, Right, heard a scouser referring to the missiles. He went, Oh, it's good, isn't it? Right, and so he then named them Scud missiles. <laughs> no, John, see that I'm Mr. Naive, and I? I thought you were on to it, Art, telling him to do a live. I didn't know, did I? I really didn't know whether it was Darren or not, for good goodness sake. Hey, Burke and Ed. Yeah, Ed's good, isn't it? Ed's good. It's like him when it's Stan Borgman, when he gave us the um, the Scouse version, talking about the German aeroplanes, the Fokker Wolves. Hey, Fokker. <laughs> no, no, it was funny. Ah, oh, dear, oh, dear. 
What are we going to do eh, with all this nonsense? Right, Gerard W, how are you? I ain't spoke to you. That is the real Darren. He just rang me, oh, it's not PD. Oh, right. Well, oh, now I am confused. Sorry, my brain's going, um, my brain is going, um, uh, my brain's going, um, 100 miles an hour. I don't know where I'm going here. I thought we were talking about Israel under attack from Iran. Well, war free. Well, listen, one of the things, right, when you make, when you have to take an executive decision, because, listen, contrary to what people may think, and it's into, I don't mind, right, Zoe Gilday does not, I repeat, does not make any final decisions here. Zoe just gives her input, other people give their input, but at the end of the day, the buck stops here. I have the final decision to make. And when I've, when I've decided, Josh, right, you're going as well because you're trying to bring up names and cause nonsense. So you've gone as well. Yeah, exactly, Zoe. Right, when I decided to ring fence the channel, right, that means that we ring fence it away from all reference to other nonsense. And we do what we've been doing here for nearly an hour and 20 minutes, talking about the um, the issues and events of the day. We've got, an, um, we've got stuff unfolding in the Middle East. We've got other things happening around the world. We've got huge social gender and all kinds of issues, right, being brought into the open, right? And, and, and so I don't want to have this. Now, if I block someone, right, it might, I I've got no personal grievance with that person or whatever. It's to present, uh, sorry, prevent, with a V, prevent any disruption of the channel. Right, hang on a sec, let's, um, but I understand they're going to keep trying because we are the Mar-a-Lago of this dark corner of YouTube, right? We have plonked ourselves right in the middle of enemy territory. We are behind enemy lines. And we've now ring-fenced our position. We're like a fire fortress. And in preventing those with bad intentions coming in, I may, we, we may now and again get it wrong. But to be honest, when you close the door, you've got to ring-fence and close the door to everyone who could be a potential threat. Right, so let's have a look. Oh, another one came in, did it? Let's have a look. There you go. So, yeah. 
Right, hide user from channel. Hide user from channel. Yes, so he is the um, um, Iron Dome of this channel. Yes, she's the deterrent. Okay, let me just go back and read some of what Zoe says, because I'll explain. I take decisions. If I block someone when I shouldn't have done right in order to protect the channel, I accept that, and, I, and I've got no apologies for doing that. When um, surgeons cut out cancer, they have to cut out some of the healthy tissue around the cancer to prevent it coming back in. So if some people get blocked and they shouldn't have done, they, they've got to regard themselves as healthy tissue that is, been, that is closely associated with a cancer. And that they're, that they're closely aligned, and so they get cut out with the cancer, even though they may be healthy tissue. Right, so let me just see where we are. Right. Zoe says, Darren doesn't normally type, write, or speak like those comments above or earlier in the week. Look at the last few lies without them and how good they were. But now all of these retards are on the attack coordinated tonight as if as it's Saturday and they're all free. Yes, Ian, you know, listen, it's not only Israel under attack from a swarm of drones. Drones, we're under attack tonight from a swarm of people with bad intentions. And as, just as Israel has the Iron Dome, Right, we have the Iron Lady. We have the Iron Lady, Zoe Gilday. And as I say, um, look, all the rhetoric and that stuff with Darren, right? Darren, right, needed 50 subscribers to go live, right? We provided those 50 subscribers. He can go live. He doesn't need to come on mine or, or anything else. He can go live himself. So there's no excuse now. He's free this evening. If that was him earlier, we'll go live, Darren, in this format. If you haven't got a StreamYard account, if if you have, it takes five seconds. You go to StreamYard, you give them your email, you click on start, right, and you get 23 hours a month. You then go onto your YouTube, right? You then go onto StreamYard, set a live up and stream it through your YouTube. It's not rocket science, so you don't have to pretend you don't know. You've been on... Um, um, YouTube since 2018. So, you know, I did you a solid by getting you to 50 subscribers. So now you can go and do that and, you know, whatever you want to do. And Zoe goes on to say, the MO of this channel is to raise the level of public discourse and the retards from plastic paddies and past and the past and the drama and beef are trying to hold us back and keep us down. Now, I've said that, all right, okay, but it's true, though. This is the Mar-a-Lago of YouTube, and it's for, the in, it's for intelligent discourse only. Yep, that's right. Oh, is there another one? Oh, dear.
Ray Ellie is all right. Yeah, Ray's been in here loads of times. What's happened then? I ain't, have I blocked Ray? I didn't mean to. If I have. <laughs> here, you, here, a bit of light relief. Come on, right here. Simon Harris warns that World War Three will be far worse than the previous 110 world wars. <laughs> hey, come on. Come on. Right, Simon Harris. Yeah, John Jones as well. Um, right, Simon Harris said that World War Three is going to be worse than the, all the previous 110 world wars. I know, I know, I know, I know, um, Zoe, I know I remember that. I definitely remember that. Right, Zoe says, we have had about three or four new people come in lately in the last few weeks of high value, that guy, that guy function, etc. And that's how we need to continue moving forward. They are worth something. They have value and they bring something to the channel. The retards can't handle the fact that they are not on our level, right? And so they do not own, so they do the only thing they can, be aggressive and try and destroy the discourse. There you go. That's true. I ain't lying. And as I say, what we're doing, right, we, we're creating, right, a ring fence little place that they all want to join and they can't. It's like a little exclusive club right behind enemy lines, right? And it must annoy them. It's a stone in their shoe because they're saying, look, look at that channel right amongst all of us pond life and all of us attacking each other. And then the allure to be part of it will grow, will increase. We're seeing it now. They'd all love to be in here, right? But they're all glued to it. They're all glued to it every time. Yeah, the intensity of the Houthi attacks in the Red Sea have become so intense that a French warship has had to exit. Here they, but they, here, look, here they go again. The French, they turned it in already. <laughs> Honestly, there are stereotypes in this world, isn't they? The French, they always turn it in, don't they? And the Italians. Yeah, do you know what I mean? In the Second World War, right, the Italians developed their own tank. Right, it only had one gear. Right, reverse. French Aquitaine class Frem frigate, the Alsace, has turned tail from the Red Sea after running out of missiles and munitions, repelling attacks from the Yemeni armed forces, according to its commander, Jerome Henry. We did. We didn't necessarily expect this level of uh, um, of threat, and they fled. They turned it in, didn't they? The French straight away, didn't they? God dear, oh dear, eh? they're good, didn't they? Eh? You want them on your side, don't you? Exactly, Art Hostage says Zoe Gilday. It will become an exclusive club for intelligent people, but always. The good day ones are always going to be a part. I don't want them to worry. No, listen, of course not. We're not judgmental only on the way people behave if they want to be part of this channel. That's all.
Here, and now, look, right, it's starting to come out. Even Alex Jones on the Wastain Infowars report, US banks on verge of collapse. I told you about France, didn't I? All those hawkish, right, um, gung-ho comments from Macron <coughs> about Ukraine and putting French troops and NATO to go in and all that, right? People were saying it's a distraction. The French economy is in the toilet, closely followed by the Italian economy. Their borrowing has gone over the limits by the EU, and they're going to have to either slash public spending so massively that it could create a civil war in, um, in France. So they need an excuse. And then when, when all this turns out, they say that this is the reason why the, the economy and all that's gone right in the toilet, but it hasn't. It's not the reason. As I say, what happens, this, this escalation or whatever happens now will be used as the excuse to blame on many stuck existing problems that have been kept and swept under the carpet. Right, now, as I telegraph and don't want to hide anything and tell porky pies or whatever, Zoe, when I go over on the Burner channel, do I just do another live on this format or do I go and open up a StreamYard account and do it on StreamYard and then see the haters if they can get that account taken down? Do I give them that opportunity? What do you think? Because I could go off of here when I close this down, go to the burner channel, which is already up and running, I can do, right? And then I can go and open up a StreamYard account and run it through the channel and see what happens and whether they could tie in or, or get the account closed. What do you think I should do? Or should I go over the burner channel and just do the format that we got here, just me talking? What do you think, Zoe? Because then we could put the link out and we could see what happens and have all the fun and games that that involves. <laughs> I mean, what do you think? Because at some stage I will do a stream through, but look, they're not the only streaming service, but when you've got people who are obsessed, right, they keep following me around trying to get accounts closed down and all that. I don't know whether they can or not. Right, on previous ones, right, they were flagged for whatever reason last September. So every time I open up a new account and stream through it, right, at some stage it will be taken down. But they were flagged. But fresh, brand new channel standalone ones, will they have the same success? I don't know. It depends on what you're in the mood for. I'm torn between wearing the retards out by allowing them some airtime, but also feel we shouldn't feed the animals by the same token. Yes. But to be honest, if we're feeding them over there, right, you know, um, it's not going to, it's not on this channel, is it?
So, um, as I say, hour and 35 minutes, you've had your Saturday fill. Okay, I can always come back, right? Look out for the, um, for the, what's name, the, uh, uh, the link which will drop. And it'll be, this is the burner channel, right? This is the burner channel, right? So you need to go and subscribe to this channel, right? And then the live, a live will drop um, after I've finished this. Okay, there it is there. Go and subscribe to that channel, right? And that's the Burner channel. Okay, and then I'll come back. What's time now? 20 to 11, 20 to 12. Say, so shall we come back about midnight? We can come back about midnight, shall we? Right, we'll come back and I'll decide what format it's going to be. So let's just, you know, fingers crossed there's no casualties with this um, escalating situation. I mean, you know, perhaps if they concentrate on infrastructure and all that stuff, which can be repaired at some stage, maybe if the Iranians want to shut off the Strait of Ormuz and all that and send the Western economy into financial Armageddon, okay, right? If that means people are not going to get killed, but sadly, I think that might happen. And it just was a strange thing today, the way that the events unfolded in Australia, that it was spinning round the world and everyone was gearing up and starting their engines. And then the identity came out, right? And I'll guarantee you, you won't hear much about it anymore because it doesn't fit the narrative. So um, anyway, I'll bring this home, hit the likes and subscribe. You can buy me a coffee. And what we'll do is we'll do it um, later on, on the Burner channel. We'll see. It might be a test for me that when you've got people pursuing you, right, they're always going to be playing with hate. But that's all right. If, if they manage to get a breakthrough, right, and disrupt anywhere, I can just adjust. Right, you don't get angry, you, right, you get even, and the way to get even, right, is to still be here. The fact that I can produce an episode every single day, right, shows a lot of the haters on YouTube and people who are attacking me and all of this stuff, right, that I'm still standing, and they get reminded of that every day. That's why I've ring-fenced this channel as best I possibly can. I guarantee there are complaints going in every single day. False, uh, false allegations, malicious stuff. Well, we just got to deal with it, haven't we? And as I say, one of those things is to not have monetization. 14 days before you can comment, right? Those, uh, right? And Zoe Gilday, the Iron Lady, our own personal Iron Dome. So anyway, everyone, right? I will be back. I will be back right after midnight. You, right, the link to the actual main channel is there. Go and subscribe and you'll get the notification because I can't be on both channels at once. I haven't got more than one device. Honestly, I've got a desktop. That's all I've got. I can't sit here with a mobile, go back in and set another live up to give you the link because if I go and set one up, right, I have to come out of this one. Mad, isn't it? I'm antiquated, but I'm all right. No bells, no whistles. What you see is what you get. 1,074 episodes in. So I'll catch you all later. Hit the likes, subscribe on the way out. Buy me a cup of coffee. And that's your Saturday update that sadly it's escalating in the Middle East as well as other issues. So on that note, thank you, Zoe. Thank you, John Jones, Planet Max, Rare Cockney Governor, John Hayworth, everyone else who's come in, Shay, all the people, if I've forgotten, sorry. You never walk alone, all of them. And we'll um, do this later on. We'll be, back, we'll be back here tomorrow for the Sunday edition. So don't forget, go over to the Burner channel and subscribe and we'll do it all again then god bless god bless everyone god bless zoe and god bless all of you and this is our hostage 
shining off.